Hello, and thank you for being with me. In this video, I will discuss what the Ukrainian government and the West is describing as a counteroffensive by the Ukrainian army. In recent days, we have observed the Ukrainian army launch large attacks, principally in the Zaboroshi Oblast, but also in the southern part of the Donetsk Oblast. Now, I will shortly comment on the results of the aforementioned attacks, but firstly, I wish to say that I personally would not describe the attacks by the Ukrainian army as constituting a counteroffensive, because Ukrainian forces have gone on the attack without any air support, which means that Ukrainian forces have no air cover whatsoever. So, for instance, there are no Ukrainian Su-25s or Su-24s or MiG-29s or Mi-24s assisting Ukrainian ground forces, which means that the Russian Air Force has complete supremacy over the battlefield in Zaboroshi and also in southern Donetsk. Thus, what we see unfolding in the aforesaid two blasts in Ukraine is not a professional counteroffensive. Rather, it is a suicide mission which has been launched by the Ukrainian government more for the purposes of propaganda than for the purposes of truly achieving a battlefield success. Now, turning to the results of the attacks by the Ukrainian army in Zaboroshi and Donetsk so far, it is abundantly clear and irrefutably the case that the attacks thus far have been a complete disaster for the Ukrainian army. Indeed, we all have seen photographs and footage of hundreds upon hundreds of destroyed or disabled or captured Ukrainian armor, ranging from German leopard tanks to American Bradley fighting vehicles, to French tanks, to Soviet-era tanks. That is all the more telling, given that only a few weeks ago, Western mainstream media said that the supply by Germany to the Ukrainian government of leopard tanks would be a, quote, game changer. Well, the uh, Russians have destroyed quite a number of German leopard tanks, and also the Russians have captured a number of German leopard tanks. Many weeks ago, I said that the Russian army had constructed in Zaboroshi a blast and also in Donetsk a blast formidable defense fortifications. So formidable, I argued, that not even the American army would be able to penetrate these. I even drew a comparison with the Kursk salient during the Great Patriotic War in the summer of 1943. In the present day, in Zaboroshi, the Russians have built line after line of defense fortifications where there are minefields, where there are trenches full of anti-tank soldiers. And beyond that, there are many, many Russian artillery systems and these defense fortifications, which also include anti-tank ditches, are supported by the Russian Air Force. For example, 
attack air, uh, aircraft and also helicopter gunships. So what I said a number of weeks ago that the Russians had constructed defense fortifications which cannot be penetrated has proved to be correct because the Ukrainian army having advanced on the defense fortifications predominantly in Zaporozhia, but also, as I said, in the southern part of Donetsk, have been obliterated. It is clear that not only hundreds of Ukrainian armored vehicles, including leopard tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles have been destroyed, but also thousands of Ukrainian soldiers have been killed. Indeed, even uh, national newspapers in Britain, such as the controversial and uh, hopeless Daily Telegraph, is now running pieces saying that the defense fortifications that the Russians have built in Zaboroshi are the strongest in the world. Whatever the Ukrainians throw at the Russians in Zaboroshi or in Donetsk or in Kherson, they simply do not have the ability to penetrate the Russian defense fortifications for a number of reasons, but a major one being that not only does the Russian Air Force have complete and utter air supremacy, but the Ukrainian Air Force isn't even able to put an aircraft in the air for even a short period of time. Modern warfare teaches us that no army can conduct a successful ground offensive without air support, which means that that ground offensive has no air cover. If, hypothetically speaking, the Russians did not have air support for their defense fortifications in Zaboroshi or in Donetsk, then, of course, it is possible that the Ukrainians to date could have been more successful. Not majorly successful, but a little more successful. However, that is not the case. The Ukrainian forces have advanced or have tried to advance without any air support. That is simply suicidal. Now I wish to turn to the performance to date of Western military equipment, which has been supplied to the Ukrainian armed forces. I have said since last spring, last summer in 2022, that Western military equipment, let's be more precise, NATO military equipment, will not, and I have been proved correct, my views have been vindicated, will not and have not met the rigors of warfare. American uh, armored vehicles, such as the Bradley fighting vehicle and the Humvee vehicle, have not proved to be a success for the Ukrainian army. The American missile system, the HIMARS, have also not proved to be a success. The other equipment that NATO has supplied, including British equipment, has also failed the tests of, rigor of rigorous warfare. And there is a simple explanation for this. Whilst the Americans and the British um, a, a create, manufacture, um, good weaponry, good aircraft, 
good tanks and good other armored vehicles, nonetheless, they cannot match their Russian counterparts when it comes to a brutal conventional war, a brutal war of attrition. The Americans and the British manufacture uh, armory, which is like Rolex watches. They do a very good job, but they cannot endure the rigors of war, such as climate and topography and nonstop work. The Russians, on the other hand, produce tanks, produce aircraft, which are not there to look nice. They are there to endure, such as the T-80, the T-90, and the Su-25. Finally, I wish to address an issue which has been raised with me by a number of people, and it concerns Lend-Lease and the Soviet Union during the Second World War. I want to clarify that Western Lend-Lease to the Soviet Union in the context of weapons such as tanks and aircraft constituted approximately 4% of the Red Army's inventory during the Great Patriotic War. So what the Western Allies uh, supplied to the Red Army from 1941 to 1945 in terms of weapons was insign insignificant. However, it was the logistical assistance in the form of Lend-Lease, which the Western Allies provided to the Soviet Union, which was of immense importance. From the summer of 1943 onwards, the Red Army went on the offensive and began liberating the Western part of the Soviet Union and then began liberating Eastern Europe and Central Europe. The Red Army offensive from 1943 to 1945 was to a very large extent based on logistical assistance provided to it by the Western Allies in the form of locomotives, trucks, and jeeps. It is unequivocally the case that Western support to the Red Army in the form of logistical equipment enabled the Red Army to maintain its offensive westwards, the momentum of its offensive westwards from the summer of 1943 all the way to the Battle of Berlin in 1945. That is not to say, however, that if the Western Allies had not supplied the Red Army with logistical uh, support, the Red Army would not have been able to maintain an offensive on their own. Because during the Great Patriotic War, and this is supported by British officials at the time, the Red Army produced one miracle after another. So the Red Army would have been able to produce its own locomotives, trucks and jeeps to sustain its offensive westwards from the summer of 1943 onwards. However, in that scenario, the war would not have ended in 1945. The war would have gone on for longer, though I have no doubt whatsoever that the Red Army eventually would have um, advanced to Berlin and would have captured the capital of the Third Reich. So, again, the support that the Western Allies gave to the Soviet Union 
in the form of tanks and aircraft was insignificant. It amounted to approximately 4% of what the Red Army had at its disposal. However, Western support to the Soviet Union in the form of logistical assistance, such as locomotives, trucks, and jeeps, was of immense importance. It enabled the Russians to maintain the momentum of their offensive from the summer of 1943 westwards. Thank you, as ever, for taking the time to listen to my analysis, and I hope you will be able to join me in my next video.